And when he did that, oh. I shit you not, I was so in it, I kicked the fucking chair clean across the audition room, lost it and nearly stormed out of the audition room. I got all the way to the door. to a very special episode of Watch Ross, the Sorry We Missed You special. Here we are everybody, back in Lily's, and we're back in Lily's Petch for a reason, because two years ago to the day, today, we started this journey of Watch Ross, of filming like weekly or sometimes bi-weekly vlogs behind the scenes of everything we're doing. And we actually sat outside, Petra, if you remember, in episode one. Let me put a clip of that in for you now. I've got your kids, Steve. Hi, Are we doing a documentary or what? There's some incredible highlights over the last two years. Here's a favorite of mine, Petra, with you in. He's shaking his head. <laughs> He's done it. I mean, oh my God. He's turned into a monster. That was when we used to get Petra. <laughs> to do ridiculous things on the vlog, eat and drink things that we didn't think you would uh, like eating or drinking because we were very short on content. Today, the vlog has evolved. We're never short on content now. Again, over the last sort of like two years, well, last 18 months of doing this, first six months, we we're probably quite short. Um, the last 18 months, we've had some of the biggest actors, agents, casting directors, like in the TV industry on this vlog. You know, we're talking like Oscar winners, some seriously, seriously successful people. And I like to think as well, Petch, like the real good guys, people who are all about helping other actors have more success in their career, sharing their knowledge, you know, giving people, you know, a peg up, it's like one up, all up. Um, if you want to go and watch those vlogs, listen to the full podcast as well, um, watch the vlogs on youtube.com forward slash watch Ross, and you'll be able to find every episode on the channel there. And if you want to listen to like the full in-depth chats, if you're an actor, you are missing out so much if you do not listen to these chats. We share like golden advice that honestly will change your career. Get to actonlist.tv, grab a membership. It'll be the best thing you do for your career, like seriously. Um, and talking about like good people, Petch, we've got an incredible guest today. This is the Sorry We Missed You special, okay? Sorry We Missed You is Ken Loach's brand new film. It's out in cinemas this week. Please go and watch it. It's incredible. People are touting it as Ken's best work. And we've got one of the stars of the show, actor Chris Hitchin, who plays Ricky Turner, um, like the lead dad in the show, an incredible actor, but he's got an incredible story, Petch. This guy, you know, has always wanted to act. Me and Petch have known, known Chris many, many years. Um, really interesting story, he's always wanted to act, um, but never really felt like in his early days that he could do when he was a kid. Got kind of like pushed into a job as a plumber that he didn't really want to do. Ended up pursuing that like for like decades, but dipping in and out of acting along the way. Um, and he's turned, he'll be the first to admit, and he's going to talk about it in this, in this interview, he's, he's turned his back on the industry many, many times. But really interesting is that like, the industry's never let him go, has it? It's always reached back out and gone, no, 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 Chris, you're coming straight back in. Um, so we're going to be talking to him all about that, the highs, the lows, the adversity he's faced, the journey to you know, getting this role, you know, a lead role in an international cinema release. It's really put him in the spotlight. That, again, comes with its pros and its cons. Uh, we're going to be talking to him all about it. And I know this is going to be one of the most honest and, like, no bullshit, like, vulnerable chats, ultimately, where he's going to be sharing everything he knows to help you guys emulate this success as well. You know, get inspired. You know, he's going to motivate you um, and hopefully keep you in the game. So he's just texted me to say he's parking up, Petch. We're going to go and uh, meet him now. And I don't know about you guys, but I... I'm itching, to, to, don't laugh, I'm itching to talk to Hitchin in my kitchen and I assure you, there will be no bitching. Let's go. Are you going for a podcast or what? This is Petch, you might have seen him knocking around, causing mayhem. So, Chris Hitchin, 
welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to the oh podcast, mate. God. That was Petch's idea to do yeah. that little rhyme. Thought as much. How are you? I'm all right. I'm good. Yeah, you're all right. Thanks, you're good. Yeah. I'm super excited about this. Honestly, not just saying that. I um, I know we're on the same page on so much of the acting industry. Like you know, we both like to cut straight through all of the nonsense. No BS. This chat is absolutely going to be like completely like super realistic. The realism of your career, the challenges you've faced, you know, where you've been, now where you are. Um, yeah, I'm mega excited. I don't really know where to begin because so much has happened. And to give people context, we're recording this roughly like what, six weeks ish before, mate, your cinema debut comes um, out November the 1st, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, no, it is. It's about six weeks. So it's about yeah, six right, weeks yeah. off. Sorry, we missed you. Mm. Comes out of the cinema. What World, is being, worldwide. Worldwide. What is being touted, though, is like Ken Loach's like best work, mate. I mean, are you feeling the pressure there? Because that, that, that's not me saying that, as in that's what I've read like lots of times. Is well, I, well, I always knew it would be because I'm in it, so no, I'm joking, <laughs> mate. Um, yeah, no, it is. It is. Um, I think... I think the reason why people are saying it's Ken Loach's best work ever is because of the times that we're living in and what the subject matter is. Yeah. I think that's the truth. Very, very current. Yeah, it's very current, yeah. And he's hit the nail. He's absolutely hit the nail on the head. He's, he's almost um, predicted things that are going to be happening because there's now things coming out in the press about some of the big companies that employ a lot of people in this country. I've just seen articles this week mm, on said big contracts companies. Contracts being changed and people being forced to do flexi shifts and, you know, having their hours cut, etc. There was an article, like, I mean, like, it, it doesn't get more grave in terms of the consequences of of some of this stuff that's, you know, that, that's documented in the film, like, actually happened in real life. You know, somebody this week who worked for said large company as a driver was getting fined because they, you know, missed a, like a few hours or whatever, a few shifts and things like that, and ended up work literally worked themselves to death. I think they they no, missed a hospital he, appointment. He died. Someone died. He died yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, it's uh, Ruth Lane's husband, Jeff. Yeah, um, so he, he was working for um, yeah, a big company at the time. Well, everybody knows anyway. He's in the press. He was working for DPD at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were fining him because he was. Um, uh, not turning up to do deliveries because he, he'd had appointments because he had um, he had diabetes. So, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he passed out his uh, drivers while he was driving and then he ended up taking some time off and he, and he passed away. So it's uh, it really sad. No, it's but, crazy. The, but the same woman, you know, I read recently that she's now being evicted from her home because she can no longer that was the Support article that I saw, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. no, so the, so the film, you know, I mean, give people like, you know, what's the elevator pitch for the film? Because people <clears> can now, I'm going to put this podcast out literally the week the film comes out in the UK mm -hmm. in the cinemas. I want every, seriously, I want everybody to go and watch this. Support Chris, support this film, but like, just go and watch it because it's such an incredible story. Just give people like, you know, the 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 one minute pitch of, you know, what it's about and what they're going to see. Um, well, it's, it's, it's really relatable because it's about a family. So, you know, there's, um, there's a teenage son. There's a there's a, there's a young girl in there as well. There's a mum and dad who are both really decent people, really trying to work hard and get somewhere in life. Unfortunately, the odds are pretty much stacked against them in terms of where they are economically and and uh, where they are in in the standing in society. So, um, and it's quite a tough watch. You know, there's a lot of things that goes goes on with the family, but. That's what makes it really relatable for people because the kids are pretty much left to their own devices most of the time and the parents are ripping their hair out, running around trying to do the best that they can. Yeah. So people that watch it can look at it and say, well, hang on a second, I was like that kid when I was younger because I remember my parents being like that. Or somebody that's a parent can watch it and go, well, I'm exactly like that because my kids haven't come home from school sometimes and I'm a bowl of cocoa pops because I'm not there to cook any, mm -hmm. you know, any dinner or anything for them. So, so yeah, a lot of people can watch it from that aspect you play ricky the dad mm. gives a little bit of insight into him and then um and then we're going to come back to this later in the podcast i'm going to then rewind you back to kind of like how this all began because i've known you many many years yeah. and like to see this happening for you mate is incredible we're going to tell people kind of like you know where you were and, and the journey to this but yeah give people a bit, bit, bit of a breakdown on ricky and um you know and, and what you you brought to that role then um well you know well the thing is with ricky uh, before before I got into acting, which I think we're going to talk about later, but yep. I was Ricky Turner. Uh, my life was in a position where um, I had no choice but to absolutely graft my nuts off to, to, to keep a roof over our head. As a know? plumber, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah, as a, yeah, running my own company, so um, which is a bit of a poison chalice from my dad, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so, so yeah, I, I understood. I understood where Ricky was at, and I think that's the really important thing as an actor. If you're going to be playing a character, you've got to connect with something within that character. You've got to have a, a part of that character that you feel in your own bones. If you don't, don't, don't go and pretend, because. Um, the camera sees absolutely everything and it can see whether you're being honest. It can see whether you're being genuine and that's what people pay good money to watch. They, wa- they want to watch actors that they 100% believe all the time. So mm-hmm. so you've got you've to try and have, either do amazingly well at your research and you know and go and be method and go and live in that person's shoes for a bit or you have to have had that experience at some point in your life. And that's the thing with Ricky, I, I, I'd had that experience. Dan Hubbard phoned me and said, mate, can you get us a space to cast a commercial yeah. in Manchester? Yeah. Um, and I was helping him cast it as a cancer research commercial. I think that was probably the first time that I met yeah, you. Yeah, Matt Millen, yeah. And Ma- oh, Matt Millen, that was it, yeah, mm. yeah. And you came in and, and absolutely crushed that audition. And one thing that stood out for me was, because um, this is the thing, right? And this is just the, the honest thing. When people like, you know, just on the on the outside seem as like you know totally ordinary people you wouldn't look at you like you say you know and go yep you know chris is definitely an actor mm. you know you will go okay he's probably you know a plumber or something you know you, get, yeah. you know that's just kind of like just, just just you know just being real but you came in and you were telling me about this technique you this anchoring technique or oh, something yeah, with right, your train okay, ticket yeah, and i thought yeah. wait a minute now this guy's like taking this shit seriously he's not one of yeah. the other people we're seeing no. in this advert he's actually like really got his head screwed on and mm. the, you know he actually understands acting um that's what stood out for me tell people about that you ended up landing this commercial yeah. and then um, and then we'll we'll go on from there i um well the wife's auntie had passed away from cancer um quite recently before that commercial came up and then so when i was on the way into manchester on the train i had the train ticket in my hand and i, I knew about anchoring techniques um from uh, from nlp which just is, tell people about this because this is fascinating it's they won't something know, they won't i did like, well i went, went, went and did life coaching and um, we did a little bit on neuro-linguistic programming which is all about how you build rapport with people and how you you know you you, you try and um develop good relations with people very quickly and and that kind of thing so um yeah, and, and an anchoring technique is a part of it where you can anchor and bond an emotion of happiness, sadness, whatever it is, to yourself by just focusing on on what it is and doing a particular um, movement or you know something that symbolises that. Yep. So on the train, I ended up folding the, the, the train ticket up, you know, backwards and forwards, kept falling in a little square. And all the time I was thinking about the wife's auntie. So I ended up on the train into Manchester, <laughs> crying my fucking eyes out, folding a train ticket up. I must have I must have looked like I was ready to be sectioned. Yep. And then uh, and then obviously when I came in for the audition, um, and I'd nipped to the toilet as well just before I was ready to come in and got the train ticket out just to you know, just to Mate, pull the emotion, people all the time. pull the emotion back up, so it was ready. And when I walked in the room, I don't know if you noticed, but when I walked in, I barely spoke to to Dan. Yeah, he 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 spoke to me, but I just I ended up just sticking my finger out, I think, and just going, no, 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 I'm I'm ready, kind of thing. Because you've got to take control of that situation and go, no, I'm here to do a job, and I want to show you what I can do. And I'll talk to you afterwards. I'll talk to you afterwards if you want to have a chat. Let yep. me just do what you want to see me do first. So, um. So yeah, and then uh, and then it come to the bit that I knew was going to have to be the bit that was quite powerful, really. So I ended up getting getting the train Take ticket out. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretending I was mauling about for my mobile phone because I had to speak to my mum on the mobile phone, pretending yeah. like you know. So, but I got the train ticket out as well at the same time and just looked at it and started unfolding it a little bit and then bang, just picked the phone up and just did did what I had to do and just let all the. The emotion just and it was out. a brilliant audition. Honestly, we both came away that day going, "Well, I mean, I, you know, I didn't know know what who, who people were going to go with, but I was like, nah, he's Chris has nailed that.' You, honestly, you just like you were just you, the best guy got the job that day, um, which is good. Um, and that put you everywhere. Your face was literally everywhere for that commercial. I know with a bald head, just bloody all over, all over. The <laughs> Shame, yeah. Got rid of his gingerness for the advert. <laughs> and then there was a job for Game of Thrones come up. And I just so wanted to be in Game of Thrones. So did I, mate. I went for an audition. I didn't get it. All Got I wanted it. to do. So I went down and, and and you know what? And it was like, they never give anything away as well. 
They never give anything. You've not got a clue. You have to sign NDAs. You don't even get to see a script. They just give you a test script, a bullshit script, just to see where your levels are and stuff. Yeah. So and um, so I went in and I did this scene and and that was it. And I'm sat there and I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if I've got this job. And then she rung me up, Nikki. And she was as upset as me when she had to tell me that I didn't get it. And I got off the phone and honestly, I cried like a baby. I was like, I can't. Oh, really? You wanted yeah, that bad? I really, really wanted to be in it. Yeah, I was absolutely gutted. And then um, the filming dates, um, for some bizarre reason, were the exact dates that the Ken Loach film audition came around. No way. So you weren't supposed to get that? You weren't supposed to get it. Right. Freaking out. God, this is just getting crazier and crazier. Like mm. if you're keeping up with this list, I know there's a lot. We're, we're all over the place in the timeline here, listeners. Like, but like that's insane. So, had you got the Game of Thrones gig, you I wouldn't would have ended up got the film. getting the film, right? So, tell us about let's let's go in at this perfect time and then going into the the journey to Ricky Turner. Well, um, originally they put it up for um, a Geordie. They just wanted all Geordies. They just wanted Newcastle actors, and he, he goes with authentic accents. He doesn't like people to come and put, put an accent put on. accents on. Yeah. Um, and, and that all comes down to, and I'll tell you why that is with him as well. It's because when he's doing his casting process and when and when he's filming, he doesn't look at monitors, you know. He stands sometimes with his back to you and he uses his ear. Really? And he can hear whether the scene's right and he can hear whether you're authentic or not in your voice. He can wow. hear the emotion. He's very, very, he's it's really clever. I've kind of started doing it myself now when I'm on set sometimes and, you know, these other actors performing. I, I'll not look at a monitor. I won't look at them. I'll just stand with an earshot and listen to the performance instead. And it's it's very different. Really interesting. Gives yeah. you a really different angle on things. Anyway, back to women with the accents. So, we, so they couldn't find anybody. So, and, and when I originally saw it, I thought, oh, I'm perfect for that. But I'm not a Geordie. And then uh, it came around again and they were looking for somebody from either Manchester, Bolton or Liverpool. Right. And where had you seen this? Spotlight. Right, okay. Just and came, what, just came straight as a Spotlight link or through Oh, God, no. I used Nicky. To, no, I used to go and s scan Spotlight every day. Yeah. Casting network, Spotlight, anything I could find. I'd sp literally spent nearly all my time on social media trying to dig things out and find things. That's Hustling. how hard you've got to Hustling work. Hustling you've got to do, you've got to hustle. Yep. Making me own stuff, making me own short films and stuff, you know. You've got to do it. You know, that actor's thing where you just think, oh, listen, I'm not waiting anymore. I've got to... You have to get involved. Yeah. Shit, I've done this, mate. I've... So what did you do? Did you reach out yourself? I went, I found, Ke I found, found Carleen Crawford's email address and emailed the director. Amazing. Right, this is, this, this is either where I get kicked out of the nest or where I, where I prove what I'm worth. So, so um, yeah, so we went in. I did the improv and I did this scene with this one guy where he was a boss and he'd sacked um, this young girl because she'd had too much time off work, but I knew she'd had a miscarriage. And I was part of the driver's union. So I was threatening that we were all going to go out and strike if he didn't reinstate her. And he was like, well, no. And, I'm, and then I ended up saying to him, well, look, hang on a second. This is why, this is why, this is why she's, um, she's not been in because she's had a miscarriage. And then he turned around and I didn't know he was going to do this. Ken had told him to do it. And he says, yeah, I know. And when he did that, oh. I shit you not, I was so in it, I kicked the fucking chair clean across the audition room, lost it, and nearly stormed out of the audition room. I got all the way to the door. I'd lost it. I was like, you fucking bastard. Bad. Just going nuts. And then uh, they went, right, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, that's okay. enough, that's enough. Chris, Papa lost it. Know. I was really annoyed about it because I was that involved in what was going on in that improv. I was... I was in it. That was it. I just, um, my son had just fitted, fitted a boiler. And um, I ended up nipping to the suppliers for him in the afternoon to go and pay him. And I just paid him for the boiler and I was coming back in the van. And my phone went and I didn't know whose number it were. And I picked it up and I went, all right, who's this? And he went, oh, hi, is that Chris? It's Ken. And I went, Ken. Oh, all right, mate. What's up? <laughs> oh, brilliant. And he says, um, well, um, I don't know whether you know or not, but um, do you want to do the film? I'd really like to do the film. And I went, yeah, all right, fuck it, I'll do it. Yeah, and it just pulled up, just pulled up inside it, rolled like cool as you like. And there you go, everybody. You've just seen a few clips from, that was a mega long podcast, an hour and like 45 minutes, I think. Um, we got like, 
really real in parts of that, though. How was that for you? Because it's one of the first first kind of podcasts you've probably done on this subject. It was really emotional, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Got so it's emotion. There's a couple of things I want to expand on that we didn't like. I just I just could have talked to you for another three hours on this, right? One of the things we mentioned in the podcast was obviously the process of, you know, well, Ken's process of filming this film, you know, directing this film with you guys. You mentioned sometimes where he surprised you and there were some things that got incredible performances out of you because you almost weren't ready or knew you were going to, you know, you knew you were going to film the scene at that point or whatever. Um, let's just expand a little bit more on the process that, that Ken uses because it's different. You said two things. Uh, well, I'll let you explain them, but one of them was that, that the film shot chronologically. That's so rare to get that luxury to shoot scenes in order. And there was the van thing. Talk us through that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, no, he shoots chronologically. And I, and I think the, the, the reasoning for that is, well, I know the reasoning for that is, is that um, as as actors, we get trained, don't we, to know where we've been, previous circumstances, where we're going to, you know, when we break a, when we break a script down, there's a, there's a, there's a way of doing it. Um, but because he drips the script in a couple of pages at a time, sometimes in the morning, to um, to the actors, he likes them to be able to perform that day with the emotion of the previous scene, the previous set of circumstances, which they will have filmed the last time they were on set. Yeah. So it stays with them and it's very fresh. So so their acting of where they're going to be going then instinctively is quite easy to do, you know. So it's so it's it it, it gives that natural natural flow to the to the scene yeah and then he gave me the keys for the van when i got to newcastle and he just went right there you go ricky there's your van go and drive it around newcastle so i'm flying around newcastle in this massive vw transporter but the thing is yeah i knew how to drive it that well uh, there's a scene where i had to drive it i had to reverse up a hill and I ended up on the first take, and David Gilchrist, the first AD, shit his pants. I absolutely hammered it 50 mile an hour backwards up this hill in a tiny street and just G-span it into into the cul-de-sac and wheel-span it back out the other way up the hill. And when I come back to first position, he just went, I'm not going to ask you to do that again. No. That's how used to the van I was, yeah. Last thing to wrap up on. You mentioned so many times, mate, like, I don't know. I've never done an interview with someone who's told me how many times they've given up or walked away from this industry and been dragged back in. You made a decision early on in your life that this is what you wanted to do. And no matter how far you tried to run from it, you know, consciously or subconsciously or whatever, you've always been dragged back in. And now you've just obviously been given this huge opportunity. Um, it was almost like it was always kind of meant to happen. There's going to be a lot of people who are watching this who are going through the similar thing. Maybe right now they decided this week that they're going to pack it in. Um, what would you just say to those people who are kind of losing faith right now? Um, ev- everybody deep down always wants... Um, they-, they all want to win the lottery, don't they? They all want the big result. I put the Euro millions on last night. It was 155 million, didn't win. No, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> uh, I think I've had my rubber the green, haven't I, really? Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, everybody wants to win the lottery. Everybody wants good fortune. You know, it's it's natural, isn't it? But, you know, want, wanting it isn't enough, you know, and needing it isn't enough. What you, what you have to ensure is that um, I've met so many actors over the years that have been doing it a long time that haven't even got a show reel, they haven't even got proper headshots. They've not even, you know, they, they've not even been to any like, uh, you know, different types of classes like Meisner and stuff like that. And I mean, I mean, I'm not like massively into all the classes and stuff. I mean, I've done a lot of them, but I come away from it all and thought, well, they're all a load of shit, aren't they? Because I just get in front of this camera and I just be me and that's it. And whatever they've written and wherever they tell me to sit, that's what I'll do and, and that'll work. And you know what? And it always does. So, but I'm in a position now where when I go on set or and I go in an audition and I, and I do that the way that I do it, the only reason I do it like that is because I've prepared that much. I know every single bit of that script. I know that scene. I know where it ebbs and flows. I can feel every movement in it so that I can go in and sit there and portray the character in that scene the way I want to portray that character and lead that scene where I want it to go. And and that's the biggest thing that makes a difference between what level of acting you're at. You've got to have the balls to lead the scene. Mm -hmm. So it's all right. You know, everybody want you know wanting to fulfil the dream and everything. You know, don't you know? 
don't give up, keep going. I mean, I give up loads of times, didn't I? And it wouldn't let me. It just kept bringing me back. But the most important thing is, is do do your own work. Yeah. Do your own work. Do do your job. It should be hard. That's the thing that I really believe in this industry. Like, we uh, we want a one percent life. We want to to get well paid to do a job that we absolutely love, and that should be difficult. It you know, and, and it is, and it, and it's kind of like it should be. You need to embrace the fact that that is the case. You've got to work hard. You've got to want it, need it, put the hustle in. You can't just want it and need it and expect it to happen. Um, yeah, meritocracy is a real thing. Like, if you work hard enough and you stay in the game, like, even when it's really dark and you want to leave, I just think, like, you know, eventually something will happen for you. It has to. That's my, it's my faith. It's not happened for me yet, Chris. So, no, <laughs> fingers well, crossed. Well, there's, not, there's only so long you can... It, it's a while, isn't it, before it gives up, you know. Yeah. Either you give up or it gives up. You just have to... You just have to keep going. It sounds like a speech from Rocky, doesn't it? You know, that's what we're here. We're here to motivate these people. Um, listen, I hope this has been useful. Please go and listen to the full podcast. It was absolute gold. There's some incredible stories. Chris is like incredibly vulnerable at points in there. Really tells the truth. We cut through all the bullshit. There's no nonsense. This is the realistic life of an actor. Guy who's hustled, you know, to many people, you know, their perception of, of you is now you've made it, but you know you've still got much further to go. You know, a lot more potential to fulfill. Um, so go listen to that. Um, Act on this.tv. Get your membership. It'll be the best thing you do for your acting career go and watch the film it's in cinemas now sorry we missed you i'm gonna go and watch it we're filming this a bit before it's out but i'm definitely gonna go and watch it um i'm gonna get a discount off petch because he works in the cinema so we'll probably go and watch it on one of the days you can get us in for free petch and i'll buy you some popcorn um but yeah please support the cause social media is up on the screen right now um reach out on instagram let us know you have uh You've seen this, and that Chris know that you've uh, you've seen the film. Um, thanks so much for being here, man. You know the catchphrase. This is so not Chris. Oh, I think I forgot it. It's you have to listen bye for now. Oh yeah. He ate. This is yeah. the cheesiest part. This is so not Chris. Um, he hates this, but everyone gets to do it. Chris, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, three, two, one. I'll do a countdown. Three, two, one. Bye, bye for, for now. now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. Better body popping. Give us some body popping, Chris. We good, yeah? <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Right, let's, uh, you good, yeah?